Hey, this is Bruce Boudreaux, and you're listening to Empty Betters with Nick Mack and Harrison. everybody and welcome to episode 191 of empty betters i'm your host harrison Schulz. i'm gonna toss it across the screen to my host nick manella what's going on buddy what's going on dude uh it is december that is fucking wild to say i can't believe that i i need this year to slow down and chill the hell out for a little bit uh way behind on christmas shopping as always i don't know how you boys are doing in that department but now is about the time where I really start to stress over it. So, uh, yeah, that's what hockey's for, forgetting about all that and putting it off to the last minute. Chipping away at it. I, I read uh, – actually, I think it was on the news. It was like if you don't order your gifts online by December 16th, there's like a 99% chance you will not get your gifts before Christmas. So you've got uh, 11 days, not 20, Mr. Nick. Oh, plenty of time, boys. Plenty of time. <laughs> I am now going to toss it across the screen to my other co-host up in Wisco, Mac Vogel. What's going on, my friend? What's up, y'all? Uh, not much. I've been real busy. I've uh, been doing some traveling, been doing some having a broken car, uh, which speaking of which, I uh, if you are a friend or family member of mine and you are listening to this uh, this episode here, uh, there is a, uh, speaking of what Harry just said, there is a 99% chance that you are not getting a Christmas gift for me because <laughs> I just spent a bunch of money on my car. So uh, sorry about it, but. Uh, the gift uh, is knowing you, right? Yeah, exactly. I don't know what to tell you. I hope yeah. you, uh hope you like friendship and uh, <laughs> high fives. <laughs> you should mail people like the, like you should make like Mac coupons and like mail them to people. It's like redeem <laughs> this for one free hockey betting tip or That's something like pretty that. Pretty much what, the, what it's come to at this yeah. point. So uh, yeah, I think I might maybe maybe girlfriend and maybe mom that might be that might be all who gets a gift those are the important ones right there you gotta gotta cover your bases yeah so uh that's where we're at but nonetheless ready to chat some hockey as usual let's get into it uh nick i think you might be onto something there with the uh the the mac coupon i think I think there's a future where we have some type of like play on with that Uh, i don't know what it looks like but that's a genius one um, but as it would Max be said, like we're... the empty betters equivalent of like a pull tab. <laughs> it would be a <laughs> Mac coupon. I'm down. We got to do, we got to make it Except happen. there isn't one that gets you $250 <laughs> right. or 99 or even one. <laughs> <laughs> um, as Max said, we have a good episode on tap here. We were just joined by my good friend, Mr. Mark Cotoraro, diehard New York Rangers fan. I think he's been on the show like three times already i think this is his fourth don't quote me on that he might be tied for most frequent guest of all time uh that's a badge of honor as we mentioned in the interview chatting metro division chatting rangers uh good interview on tap we'll get to that here real shortly um before we do i just want to remind you guys that this episode with mark is brought to you by brackish life now listen you'll hear in the interview Mark's a New York City guy, so he's outside a lot. And everyone knows New York City guys are really outdoorsy, and they love going up on the water and outdoors just like us. So if you want to be like a New York guy and be like Mark, you better best believe that he's wearing brackish life when he's walking the city streets and he's going to get pizza and go to work. He swears by it. He's told me he swears by it, gets compliments on the gear all the time. You need to go to www.brackish.life today if you want to cop some Brackish Life merch and be like Mark and his New York friends. Check out their Christmas sale. They've got some great deals going on now. They just put up beanies, some awesome new hat designs as well. So be sure to check them out. For sure. Once again, that is www.brackish.life. And also a reminder, they have teamed up with Rink to Reef Chesapeake Bay to preserve the area that many of us call home. Rink to Reef repurposes broken hockey sticks into oyster restoration habitats. Brackish Life donates a portion of their proceeds to Rink to Reef 
to further preserve the beautiful Chesapeake Bay area. Maybe you can add Manhattan to that list at this point. I don't know. Uh, support. I don't think great... anything can be done to save that water, man. That's <laughs> it. I think that's long gone. <laughs> support this great cause by checking out www.brackish.life today. We're going to cut to the chase here and interview Mr. Mark Cotoraro right now. And it is now my pleasure to welcome on for the I Have Lost Count time, my good friend, Mr. Mark Cotoraro up in New York City. How you doing, my friend? I'm great. Thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to uh, discuss my uh, my team this year and how they're doing. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to roll. <laughs> Is this four? I think it's at least three, right? <coughs> Gotta be. Yeah, somewhere around there. I think it might be four. I don't know. But uh, how's the windy city treating you? <laughs> it's windy. It's cold. Uh, it's really the city that never sleeps. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't think I've slept either. <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, <clears throat> aside from the weather, exciting time to be in New York. Excuse me, if you're a hockey fan, especially if you're a Rangers fan, we'll talk about that other team up there that is probably the most boring team in the league in a little bit. But uh, we're going to talk some blue shirts first. Mark, you guys are first place in the Metro. You guys look awesome so far. I think everybody kind of expected it. Um, what have you been on the rag so far this year? Uh, you know, new coach coming in. I think the expectations were, first off, that this team might get off to a rocky start. Just based off Lobby's new system, you know, new players adjusting. Gallant's Gallant really didn't have a system when he was in New York. It was kind of just take the puck and go go hundred feet with it and figure it out. And they were able to do that because they have so much talent. But this new system that they've bought into is a lot of defense, and it's, it's a defensive minded first team now. And <clears throat> you can just see off the start, start they have a lot, a lot of structure for up and down. Um, this new kid Gustafson they got from the Capitals last year is a absolute stud, an absolute stud. Um, Adam Fox going down, I think it was with the first week of November, was almost a blessing in disguise because they you got to see a, like a real good look at Gustafson and what he can do, <clears throat> and just him manning the power play, the power play one unit, and him is just like another offensive minded defenseman, you know, not just him, just. Everyone seems to be contributing the third line, the fourth line. So they got four lines rolling right now, and it's uh, it's very exciting. People seem like they were pretty much ready to give up on that dude before he came to the Caps, and then he ended up having like a career year with us. Really, really got himself a new lease there. And then, yeah, he's, I mean, I thought he looked great with us, and uh, he he's looked awesome with you guys. You nailed it. Yeah, he's he's like another like a not want to say he's another Adam Fox in the power play, but he's got that sort of quarterback, you know, that top of top of the you know the zone, and he can quarterback a whole power play. Now you throw him on the second unit along with Fox in the first unit, you have two, you know, two two studs going and coordinating that whole power play. So if you see the if <clears throat> even if you just see the power play numbers, it's off the charts as it is every year. But now you actually have a true second power play unit that you can put on the ice he plays with a lot of confidence which I, I think it burned him a couple times in washington which i mean if you're a defenseman playing a little too confident that's gonna happen but i like it i like the style a lot i think when you pair him with a guy who is sort of a, a counterpart to his offensive capabilities like you know gustafson's gonna move the puck he's probably gonna skate it out of the zone more often than not if he can't find a breakout pass like you mentioned he's great on that second power play unit i think when you pair him with a good stay at home more of a shutdown defenseman it gives him that little bit of wiggle room too and i think that's what he finds whenever he's in a la violette system yeah for sure and and it's not just him either everyone who they've put in, into the lineup They've added in outside of Kako. I don't know what's up with that guy. That guy has just been, I hate to say it, but a dud the whole entire year. Um, he's, he's essentially useless. Um, it just, it just shows you just, they call up Johnny Brzezinski uh, last week. He's got more points than Kako. He's played four games. He slipped right into that first line with uh, Kreider and Mika. And it just shows that their whole team, you plug in anybody and they're, and they're going that fourth line, good row VC and Pitlick. A couple of games ago, two, three games in a row, there was the best line on the team. So when your fourth line is your best line, it's it, it's saying something. 
Obviously, uh, you know, Panarin, uh, both of the goalies, I think, come to mind when I think of who's been really good on this team so far. But I, we'll get to them. But first, I want to ask you about a guy, Vincent Trocek. I feel like this is somebody who kind of flies under the radar a little bit, um, you know, around the NHL. But to me, this guy has been just exactly what he needs to be for you guys so far. Just a, a solid middle six guy. And he's he's putting up some points, too. Yeah, he's uh, benefiting. Obviously, he played with Panarin last year, but now he's benefiting, I believe, even more. Um, he's an absolute stud on the faceoff circle. I think he's second in the league in faceoffs. Um, I think the most underrated signing by player coach this offseason for the Rangers was Michael Pekka, their assistant coach. The Rangers were, I think, in the bottom tier last year with faceoffs. I think they're in the top five this year. And if you ever get a chance and you look up what they do on the faceoff, so when they're lined up against their man, they're switching sticks. They're switching sides. So it's it's a cool thing to watch. I don't know if you can find it on Twitter or whatnot. Maybe I'll send it to you later. It's their whole – that everyone on this team now couldn't face off, and that was a huge uh, dilemma last year when you're, you know, in the bottom half of the league in faceoffs and you're trying to, you know, take a deep playoff run. It's not going to happen. That's old school. I love that. I uh, that's how I was taught to to take draws yeah. when I was growing up as a kid. And you don't I feel like you don't see it a lot these days. But that's I mean that's how a lot of a lot of our age kids and, and older were taught growing up. I love that. Nick Mac, I I have to interject here. I mean we're having a great interview, good back and forth. But the first two bullet points that were brought up are Laviolette and Gustafson, both former caps from last year. I just I just want to hear if there's any you know comments about that. Well, my first comment is I, you know, right away, Mark, you mentioned that Lavi is kind of a, a defensive minded coach and you got the wheels turned for me because I'm like, hmm, I wonder why a defensive minded coach didn't fucking work last year in Washington. Maybe it's because our defense sucks so bad. But uh, no, I mean, I personally, I'm one of the Caps fans who uh, isn't a complete idiot. And I don't think I ever blamed Laviolette for any of our, uh, our lack of success last year or the year before. I think he, he played the hand he was dealt. It wasn't the best hand. And, you know, I, I do think it was probably the right move to move on from him because it just wasn't working. But that being said, I don't, uh, I don't have any like hate towards him. I honestly, I like the guy and I, if not for the fact that I'm not, you know, I, I hate the Rangers, so I, I don't root for him, but but it's good to see him doing well in a weird way, if that makes sense. Mac, I think you and I both said as soon as the Rangers hired him, we were like, oh, shit, that's that's going to work out really, Match really made well. Match made in heaven. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, yeah. And same for Gustafson. I mean, like, I always root for, for guys once they leave the team, unless it was somebody I just totally didn't like or something, but – um you know good to see him doing well just wish he wasn't wearing a ranger sweater that's really the only thing i could say yeah i'm happy it's going better for him in new york than it was in toronto toronto i feel like if he had stayed around there for a while that that could have gotten very ugly for him so i'm happy he's out of there and in a place where he's getting utilized and appreciated too just don't do it against my team please mr cordero i want to ask you about one guy in particular i know you and i have texted privately about this guy many of times uh mr Alex Lafreniere. What have we seen out of him this year? Uh, I think, you know, people are saying, you know, he's arrived this and that, but, you know, his game is finally coming together. And I think the biggest thing this year is Lavi's letting him play. I think the years prior, it was, you had a bad game. You're going down to the third line. I think at some points last year, they had him on the fourth line. It just can't happen. If, if the first round pick with that much potential, you have to let him go. And he's got to know if he makes a mistake, he's not getting sent down to the third or fourth line. I think, he, you know, Lavi's just letting him play. And I mean, listen, it does help playing with Panarin and Trocek. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of these plays is, you know, it's his doing. You know, the way he gets into the zone, I don't know. He had, I don't know if you guys saw, he had a pass to Panarin a couple of games ago that was filthy. Um, he's playing a complete game, and uh, it's exciting to see because he never really got that chance to sort of stay in the second line get some power play time. It was always with Gallant. You had a bad game, sent down the third, fourth line. And this year it's, uh, it's completely different. I think that's a, that's a perfect way to put it. You know, he was always going to be that guy that was going to shine when he was on the second line, you know, getting top six minutes and he's also getting power play one or power play two times. So the fact that he's sort of putting it together now, 
I almost want to mirror this sort of Jack Hughes thing that was going on in Jersey where he didn't score a you know ridiculous amount of points his rookie year. Everyone was saying, oh, bust. Oh, washed up. Oh, not ready for the NHL. It's like, just give these kids time. They'll find their role. They're fine. They'll find their way to play their game. And Lafayette's looked incredible, man. I mean, those shootout can opener moves he has down are, oh, my God, they are nasty. Another guy, I can't believe this hasn't come up already, but dude, Condre Miller is like, to me, that guy is is such a stud. I feel like he's a, a top, not even top four, a top pairing defenseman on any team in the league. Yeah, they he's played great and Truba's played great too. That whole that that pair has played just awesome defensively. And now Miller's, I think, he has two goals in the last three games. He's coming along offensively as well. Just all three pairs, even Lingren too. Lingren out. You know, didn't have Fox for a whole month. That first pair didn't skip a beat. Um, Braden Schneider, another one you talked about, Gustafson, just up and down every, and even Zach Jones when he filled in for for Adam Fox. I know you guys had him on the pod last year. Friend of the program, played played great when Fox was out. Played great, another sort of quarterback quarterback in power play, and whatnot. But um, it just seems like I said that you know when someone's out of the lineup, I know they're they're out without uh. Keto and Cocker right now, whoever they're putting in is producing. And it's it's weird to see because, you know, I don't know if it's a sign of just a team that's, you know, on a different trajectory as opposed to the other years, but it just feels that no matter who they put in, they're going to produce, and it's cool to see. Yeah, that sort of next man up mentality is definitely what you're seeing from that team, and it's just ex- an example of how deep that team is now. I think, you know, you look at – the playoff struggles that this team has had in the past three to four years, what's been the knock on them is they can't keep the puck out of the net. And it's not necessarily goaltending's fault. So I think the fact that the defense is so deep this year, these guys are legit and everyone else in the Metro should, and is probably already freaking out right now. And I don't, we, I haven't even touched on it yet is the, the goaltending of Jonathan quick. Just about when to say you, that. I was just <laughs> about to say that too. <laughs> what when you have a goalie who's seven zero and one has got a save percentage, I think above whatever it is nine eighteen. You know, yeah, nine eighteen for a backup. That's on top of Igor having what? What is he like a nine zero seven or something yep. like that? Yeah. It just lets Igor, you know, you have that luxury of you know Igor is playing one night, you know, I can go with quick and know I'm good in net. So the luxury you got to ride the hot hand. I get it, but it's good to give Igor sort of that not rest, but you know try to manage his games now this way later on in the year when they're, you know, when you're preparing for the playoffs, you can sort of let him go and start letting him take almost every game. And Which if you do two shutouts too. Yeah. And if you're I, in a situation where you need to jumpstart your team and, you know, let's say you give up too early, you want to get the tendy out of there. Going to Jonathan quick is not a bad option by any means. You're absolutely still in that hockey game. So my question to you is, is he about to help you win a Stanley cup after he took one away from you? Yeah, it's it's gross to even think about. I still have <laughs> nightmares of Hank lying face down in 2014. I, yep, that'll haunt me for the rest of my life. But um, if Jonathan Quick takes us takes us to the Cup this year and helps us win in any sort of fashion, that'll all be erased, and I'll love him forever. But until there you then, go. <laughs> so uh, let's chat a little bit of Metro on a broader scale. I know you've got some pals, being the Long Islander that you are, who probably root for that team over in Belmont. Uh, what are the thoughts? What's the vibe around the uh, the Islanders fans right now? I mean, I, at, at first, I believe they were okay, and then they hit like a huge skid. Yeah. And I think now they're kind of, you know, not on a winning streak, but they look a lot better than they did. But, you know, their brand of hockey can put you to sleep for seven hours. It's just that type of hockey, and it's not and it's not a knock on them. It's not a knock on anybody, but it's just, you know, it's they're a bunch of ancient artifacts playing hockey, and it's it's gonna <laughs> outside 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 of Barzell, who's got who everyone on that team is slow. And yeah. he doesn't want to yeah. score for whatever reason. I don't know. He it. refuses to score. He doesn't like scoring goals. And don't, um, get, don't get me wrong. They have playoff experience too. You know, you don't want to, it's not a team you want to see in the playoffs, but any team with the, any team with a little amount of speed is going to run laps around that team. Who's a team in the Metro or even the East on a, on a broader scale that, that kind of scares you a little bit that maybe people wouldn't think. I mean, obviously we know Carolina, they're going to be really good. Boston is really good. Is there any like dark horse team where you're like, Oh shit, I don't know if I want to run into those guys. Yep. I've been saying the last two years, Tampa. Don't want any Ooh. part of Tampa. Don't okay. want Tampa. 
It's one of those situations where until they aren't winning, it's like the Patriots. It's like they're just going to be there every year. They're going to be in contention every year. There's nothing you can do about it. And we're saying that, and I'm pretty sure they're on like a cold streak right now too, but it just doesn't even fucking matter. But doesn't – We all know they're going to turn around and be fine. 45 yeah. points in 23 games or something. Kucherov like has, has somehow, I don't know how, but somehow quietly like been a stud all year. I don't know how we continue to forget about this guy year after year, but he's like literally making a, making like an MVP caliber season and nobody's talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, Nick, they're like, it's a perfect example or comparison is that they're sort of like the Patriots or Tom Brady when it comes to the playoffs, it's, you know they're there, and you know they're good, and you don't want any part of them. I said it two years ago. I forgot who asked me. It's like, who do you fear playing uh, going into the playoffs? And this is when the Rangers were a young team, and they made the Eastern Conference Finals. I go, I want no part of Tampa, no part. And it's just that type of team. They know how to win, and they and, you know. And play. now they're pissed off because they had they yep. lost to Toronto. So I mean, you know, yep. they're going to come back swinging this year. Yep, and I think both Florida teams too. I, I, I'm not even, you know, Pandas yeah. are another team that's that are that's a scary team. Yeah, someone that we bashed in the preseason, and of course that's aging so nicely. I'm pretty sure we bashed the Bruins, the the Panthers. I don't think we bashed the Bolts, but we're like, meh. And all three of those teams are looking really good right now. So, um, Mark, I want to ask you this: as a guy who has seen John Tortorella behind the bench and knows what he can do. The Philadelphia Flyers are kind of like a Cinderella story so far. They're third in the Metro at this moment. They just beat my Penguins in back-to-back games. Both went to overtime. I mean, they look kind of good, dare I say. Like, I don't know what to make of it, but Torts has some magic running there. Yeah, he's a, he's a different type of coach, you could say. He's not the typical traditional coach where, you know, X's and O's. It's You get in front of the shot, block it, and if you don't, you're sitting on the bench. And it's that grit, that Philly grit, I think – um which is named Garn Hathaway on that team couldn't have couldn't be a more perfect fit. When I was watching uh, the Rangers Flyers, I think it was last week, a couple weeks ago. I was I was just watching that he's all over the ice. You, you freaking hate to play against him because he's so freaking annoying. But that's that type of guy that Torts you know thrives off of, and it'll be interesting to see if they can keep it up. His style of play does take a toll on the team. So it's it's beginning of December right now. We'll see where they are in a month or two. And if you know if they're still at the top, then kudos to to Torts. It's one of those things where, like, I think a, a you know a month, uh, even a couple weeks in, everyone's like, oh, cool, but it won't last. A month in, we're like, mm, weird, it won't last though. And then we get to like Thanksgiving, and I saw some stat because they were in second or third place then. And I saw some stat that was like I don't remember the exact thing, but it was something along the lines of like teams in third place in their division or teams in the playoffs uh, at American Thanksgiving make the playoffs like 80% of the time or some shit like that. And I was like, shit, like when is <laughs> yeah. this team going to fall off? They're not supposed to be in there. So I don't this know, is it's like interesting. This is what Torts does. I mean, he did it with the Jackets. I feel like he had a couple runs like this with the Canucks before that went south. So he's he gets the most out of whatever you give him. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also interesting to see the Metro is so tight. So which teams are not, outside of Columbus? What which teams aren't making it? You know, right? I you're got, counting I on a team like the Flyers to be outside of it, and then all of a sudden they're good, and you're like, well, yeah. shit, somebody else is out then. And like Harry said, I'm starting to think I know who it is. <laughs> I think I know two teams who that might be. <laughs> Before we move on, I have the perfect analogy because Nick, you just said he squeezes the last thing out. Torts is kind of like uh, that shampoo bottle that you think is oh, gone. Yeah. You just add a little bit of water to it, and you're like, damn, I actually smell pretty good. This I got another week here, boys. Weeks. Yeah, yeah exactly. I got another week. <laughs> That's next week's paychecks problem. <laughs> Mark, you know I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to ask you kind of a two for one. One, how far can the Rangers go this year? Or how over under, over under two and a half playoff rounds? And then my second question is your cup final pick. Uh, over. If it's not this year, I don't know when it is. Okay. It's, and it's over two and a half. And my pick is the Rangers. Um, I don't. I, I this team up to down. There's no flaws right now. I'm knocking on wood as we speak because <laughs> who knows what could happen in the next three four months. But up and down. Yeah, at the deadline, can they add another top six piece? Sure. But as of right now, they're really the defense is all set. You got two goalies playing at a high level. You have Panarin playing at this rate. He's going to win the heart. 
you know, it's just you have everything clicking. And I know it's, you know, it's only December and you don't want things to click too early. But at the same time, it's, you know, where's the flaw in this team? I think the only real flaw is they give up a little bit, you know, a lot of, I, don't know, I guess, they're in the bottom half of odd man rushes. But outside of that, man, it's, I don't know. Uh, it's a little biased. That's a biased answer. I know it is, but, you know, I'm speaking the truth. And then your cup final, I know you got Rangers winning it. You got anybody out of the West? Uh, I'm going to say Kings. Ooh, a little Love rematch. A little that. rematch. Yep. Quick. That's... That would be a weird one. That would be a really <laughs> weird one. Quick going against his old team. Ooh. Especially when he didn't have the uh, most graceful departure from there last year. Exactly. You know he'd that be up be for that. Yeah, for sure. All right, I got one for you, Mark. What uh, what do you think? Do you think Patrick Kane will find success in Detroit, or do you think he'll be like just another one of these guys that gets the hip surgery and kind of peters out? So I don't know if you follow Rangers Twitter as closely as I do. It's there's uh there's two halves. It's the I want Patrick Kane and nobody else, and it's keep Patrick we- Patrick Kane far away from my team. And that was I want Patrick Kane. That dude is a gamer. When he's on, he's on. I don't care if he's got two hip surgeries, his head's detached from his body. That dude's a gamer. Um, yeah, I I think he's gonna do great in Detroit, barring injury, bearing injury. But you know, I like the signing for Detroit. I think that's an up and coming team, and you add a veteran presence like that, it can only do good. So oh, you mentioned kinda... um Capo Caco at the beginning. Um, I know he's banged up right now, but like you mentioned, a guy that really since he got there has just struggled to find his role in this team and and make an impact. What do you want done in that situation? Is that a player that you would actively be shopping now to try and get as much as you possibly can, especially because the cap hit is low? Or would you like to hang on to this guy and give him a little bit more time in the system? So it's such a it's like it's a we it's a you're sort of in like a no man's land with Kako right now because yep. First of all, he's hurt. You don't know when he's coming back. They said he's coming back this year, but who knows? Maybe they put him in the LITR and they, you know, eat his cap, sign somebody else. He comes back for the playoffs. I don't know. But saying if he was healthy, I probably would keep him because I don't think you're getting much back from him. Maybe you get a second, third round pick, but what good is that to the Rangers right now? Or you package him with a pick and you go get a top six guy, I guess. But it's tough because you're in no man's land. The guy has to produce. He's at his lowest value probably ever right and you know where do you put him when he comes back to it's another question who are you taking out yeah it is a little bit low risk with him too because he is only what it's like 2.1 million i think or something like that so it's not like it's completely killing the bank account for him and like you said plus if you shelf him on ltir you don't even have to worry about that right now yeah and i think a lot of ranger fans are also calling for good rose head because he's making mm. i think three and change and he's the fourth liner he's got five points and, you know, it's it, his is a little different because he's not all about, you know, the stats and whatnot. He's one of the leaders in the team. So if you take a leader out of the room, what's that do to the room? So, you know, there's a lot of angles they can go through at the deadline. You know, I would love to get Tarasenko back. I think that'd be awesome. Or even um, Duclair from San Jose would be awesome. Yep. But uh, we'll see what they do. We'll see what they do. They have their assets. They got, a you know, a couple guys in um, the AHL, too. So there's a lot of different options they can take. So it's exciting. Nick Mack, I kind of want to ask you guys this while we have Mark here. I mean, we're coming up on Christmas 20 days away. Wow. That's weird to say. I know we had our preseason cup predictions. Has anything changed for you guys? I mean, you know, do you see the Rangers being the team to beat? Is it Boston? You know, does someone sneak up? Maybe it's Tampa. I mean, I'm kind of with Mark where it's like, it's hard to pick against the Rangers right now. I mean, Like you said, they're doing everything right. Everything's clicking. Don't really see any major holes in the lineup. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that would, if you made me pick right now, that'd probably be my pick. But, uh, yeah, if I had to pick against them, it, it's going to be, like you said, a team like Tampa or, uh, I mean, m- maybe Boston. I know we shit on them during the preseason, but uh, I still just love to shit on them. And I, I'd love to believe that they're just, like, still not the real deal. So I'm going to keep riding that train. Um but yeah, now the rags are the real deal right now for sure. I think I, you know, after it, the Rangers are my cup pick right now. And then 
Tampa's probably a close second. I would pick those two over Boston simply from goaltending. I mean, those are the two best goaltenders in the world right now. So, and Vassy and, just did has not missed a beat. Came back from all. back surgery after like two months, and he's like, "I'm good. Shut yeah, out. Here you go." Exactly. So those guys are the dangerous ones in the East. And notice how no one mentioned Carolina, and that's because we're sick of their bullshit. You know, show up yeah. when you have something to prove in the postseason. Otherwise, just Losers. just don't stop Losers. wasting my time. Mark, I'll ask you one last, my last question of the day. This is the most important question you're going to get asked this entire Rangers season. What would your reaction be if they wore blue helmets with their white uniforms on the road? Hmm. It could happen. Oh, no. They just, they just Never. signed a, They just signed something where they said it's allowed. So what are your thoughts on that? No, I think you keep the traditional, what is it? The white jerseys, white helmets. Yeah. Yeah. Those jerseys are awesome. Those are my favorite Rangers jerseys, the white ones. Outside, yeah. like the old throwbacks, of Stadium Series one, the white ones are 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 awesome. I think they're wearing them right now, but no, don't touch that. <laughs> What's the saying? If it ain't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yep. Yeah, I think I, I think the Rangers <laughs> exactly. and the Blues have the best away look in hockey, and it may be the Red Wings, but those two don't; those should never be touched or messed with. You yeah, had to ask the 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 hard hitters there because I don't know if you've listened recently, but like that's been a huge topic. Is they signed this bill where like away teams can wear like a colored helmet now if it doesn't match the same color as the home team and the sharks probably did it against you guys i was i was i I was i was gonna say i the sharks played us the other night i said i I was saying to uh i I was talking to you i was like i love those teal helmets on them the white with the teal awesome awesome It, it works for them it works for some teams but i'm with you like the rangers should not be that's one team who doesn't need to fuck with their uniforms whatsoever they're good yeah, they, they got them. The new, uh, I guess, the stadium series here just came out, too. They're cool. Nothing, you know, not yeah, great. I did horrible. Know. Actually, yeah. Yeah. They're clean. They're clean. I'm pretty sure the uh, – so the Kitchener Rangers in the O, they have the exact same uniform as the New York Rangers, but with the white uniform, they wear red helmets, which – yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> I mean, it looks very OHL when you look at it, so please don't do that in the <laughs> NHL. You fellas got any final questions for Mr. Corderaro here before we get him out? You all good? Who's good. unsung hero on the team right now? Give me one guy. Uh, Jimmy VC. Nice. Ooh, best pizza in New York. Go. Don's and Bleaker. It's a there good go. one. Okay. <laughs> hey, you got to ask it. That, you know, why Why you got him? When in Rome? I asked but, Harrison that. I, you went to uh, somewhere in Philly, and I asked him, I was like, I forgot what place you were. I was like, what's better, that or John's? I think you said John's or it was close or something. Yeah, Angelos. That was a really tough decision. Yeah. <laughs> Angelos, like kind of like that thick Sicilian cut, at least the style we got. But that John's on bleaker. Mark, we I've got to make a, a ride up to uh to visit you guys. It's been too long, but uh we'll we'll do that after the holidays are over. For sure, for sure. Maybe come for a penguins game at the garden. I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> not, not at this not, not at this current moment. <laughs> But uh, we appreciate you coming on. I think you're tied for, like, most frequent guest of all time, so you should wear that with a badge of honor. Yep, um, I'll take it. Yeah, but we appreciate it as always. Good luck the rest of the season, kind of not really, if I'm being honest. But, uh, <laughs> a pleasure having you on, as always. Awesome. Thanks for having me, and uh, hopefully I'll see you back when we win the Cup. As always, it's a pleasure to talk to Mr. Corderaro, good friend of mine, um, always a good – Good guy to bounce some hockey ideas off of. I know he's obviously Yankees, Cowboys. You know how that whole thing goes. Like, it's yin and yang kind of. But when it comes to the Rangers, the man knows his stuff. I gave him credit. Like, he's a diehard, so we always love having him on. If you're a Rangers fan, I would go follow him on Twitter. It will be on our page, his uh, link. Yeah, I echo that. He, a lot of lot of Rangers fans are, have just a lot of smoke blown up their ass constantly. He at least knows what he's talking about. I'll give him that, which is yep. uh, that's huge for a Rangers fan because there's a lot of them that just they don't know a damn thing, and they they uh, yeah. It's interesting. It's an he interesting does spend thing. most of his time watching the game and not having a one way conversation with the television. So good Rangers fan there for sure. That's uh, that's a plus. Yeah, wait till he beats your team in a playoff series and you, uh, you'll think a little bit differently, especially if you blow a 3-1 lead. I know what that's like. But nonetheless, I digress. Um, before we get to the news, I think Mac has a word from our sponsor, Elwoods. 
Sure do. I was just down at Elwood's uh, last week watching some hockey, and you should be there too. So just remember to support your local dive bar and have a beer at Elwood's Liquor and Tap, home of the Pizza Luge. Located in the heart of downtown Milwaukee on Water Street, this 70s-inspired bar has a little something for everyone. From daily happy hour, rotating taps, free birthday perks, and a four-season patio, a good time is always around the corner. With the full NHL package, plus TV screens indoors and out, Hockey fans can watch any game, anytime. And don't leave your pups at home. They're also a dog-friendly bar. We'll see you down at Elwood's Liquor and Tap. Another uh, another plus, I was there with our boy Riptide uh, watching some hockey. He's a big blues fan. He's actually been getting uh, way more into hockey, which is, uh, which is fun. Um, I was watching a blues game with him at Elwood's, and what we didn't know, there was also a Milwaukee Bucks game going on that night. And if you order a pizza during either a Bucks game or a Packers game, uh, you get a free pitcher of beer. So that was pretty cool. We had no that idea is an unbelievable deal. Well, and we went there because we, we were hungry and we we're like, oh, they have good cheap pizza. Let's just go there and get a pizza and a couple of beers. And we ordered the pizza and she's like, uh, she just puts a big pitcher of beer <laughs> there. And we're like, what's this? She's like, Michelob, it's free. <laughs> we're like, like, I love you. What? Thank you. We're, we're um, like, cool. Why? <laughs> she was like, first of all, you should never ask why for free beer. And we're like, you're right. And then she was like, but just so you know, Packers and Bucks. And she walked away. Did uh did you guys happen to catch any of the college football over the weekend? So the Texas not. game. Yeah. Um, so we could go into college football for hours with how they fucked up the playoff. But uh, for the Michigan Iowa game, apparently there was a bar in Cedar Rapids that was doing oh, poor until those. Iowa scores. Uh, so free draft beer until the Hawkeyes scored a point, which they did not do the entire game. Oh my God. <laughs> I heard that. Didn't they estimate it was like $500 worth of beer? I'm yep. kind of surprised it wasn't more, honestly. Yeah. But Midwest. That is what are you going to do? That's yeah. a genius idea. Yeah. True. Yeah, we should do that. Probably like two bucks anyway. <laughs> we should have that at uh at Taffers for like a Caps power play goal, or like every power yeah. play the Caps get for two minutes, you get <laughs> unlimited shots until they oh, score. Oh god! Ooh. Or until they take a penalty, fifteen seconds into their own power play right. and make it four right. on four. Yep. Hey, I know all about that. We got uh, you got the worst power play. We got the third worst power play. So I'm right there with you. It's but, rough right now. Welcome to our club. Yep. Welcome to yep. our club. Welcome Squidward. Welcome Squidward. Welcome Squidward. Welcome Squidward. The Mac has had that one locked and loaded for like months, I bet. It's never not appropriate. That was, that was a good vintage EB meme back in the day for sure. All right. Well, uh, now that we've got the pitter patter out of the way, let's get to the league news. This first one is probably the only good piece of Penguins news over the last week. Tristan Jari scored a goal. Uh, scored an empty net goal against the Tampa Bay Lightning last week when the Penguins defeated them. Don't ask me how they did that. Um, this is a really weird stat. Nedeljkovic and Jari are the highest scoring goaltending tandem in professional hockey history with a combined five career goals at the professional level. Nedeljkovic has two in the AHL and one in the East Coast League, while Jari has one in the A and one in the big leagues. That's pretty weird. His was a peach of a goal, too. I mean, he absolutely scooped that thing, and it it was like flat as a pancake when he hit the net. So, I mean, at least it was pretty. I mean, some of the goalie goals you see, they'll like bank it off the boards or it goes off of someone's skate and then it counts or something like that. But, no, he went for it and he got it. Yeah, there was one the AHL the other day where it's just like goalie had had like made a save and the puck went in the corner and then a guy like on a delayed penalty – fumbled it behind him into his own yep. net. Goalie got credit, but he didn't shoot it or anything like that. So I'm going to go a little in depth here and nerd out for like two seconds. Ricard Raquel, I believe he makes like five point something million dollars a year. Tristan Jari has more goals this season than Ricard Raquel. Oof. Rockstar. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Not a I good will, look if you're Raquel. I will do one more uh, as I'm typing this. Sorry if you can he hear my keyboard. The Pittsburgh Penguins have not scored a power play goal since November 12th. They have three more games until December 12th, which would mean that Tristan Jari potentially could have more goals in a month than the Penguins do power play goals in a month, which is really, 
really a Todd Reardon special, in my opinion. That is, um, it's very unique because all we heard, Mac, for the longest time over the summer was how good this power play was going to be because someone from San Jose was bringing right. his yeah, 104 well. point self to the team. So, yeah, huh. mm. yeah, I don't know who would have said that. that, guy yeah, that. You know what? I mean, you know, what would be even worse is if you bought that guy's jersey. Yeah, or that like would if, be worse <laughs> if he was making like an ass load of money and still didn't help the power play at all. I don't know. That would be bad. then. It, then again, he who lives in a glass house should not throw stones. So before I was going to say, let's let's calm it down there, Mister Caps fans. Um, if you don't know, then you don't know. But just take a look at the power play standings, and you, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, speaking of which of power plays, the Devils and the Canucks. They're going to face off tonight as we're recording this, last night as you're listening to this. That means the Hughes brothers are going to be in action. It is the first time that all three Hughes brothers will share the ice in the NHL uh, on a West Coast trip for the Devils at 10 p.m. tonight, which is pretty cool. It's really cool. There's an interview circulating with them. I think it was like right when Quinn was getting ready to go to, to Michigan, and it has the two younger ones in there. And Luke specifically is talking about how he wants to play with or against his brothers in the NHL. And I think this interview is probably like eight years old now. So it's just cool to see that that came to fruition. I asked this question before the episode. I just kind of want to, you know, play a little uh, brain popcorn for la- whatever that fucking game was in like elementary school when they would make kids change reading. And then the slow kid would be like, Jesus Christ, I can't take this. And they popcorn reading or whatever. Um, Today, Junior. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Laura, has, Bill. <laughs> has there ever been a full family all on the ice at the same time in the NHL? Because this is all three brothers. The Stalls didn't do it because I don't think Jared ever played a game with them. Right. And I I said I brought up the Stroms as well, but I believe there's another Strom brother besides Ryan and Dylan it's not in the NHL. It couldn't the have Sut- been all the 85 Sutter brothers because no, there's know. 85 of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, there's yeah, too many. I would, I would wager probably is the first one. What um, about the uh, the Stasneys? I feel like they might have done it with the Nordiques mm-hmm. back in the day. The Nylanders technically, but there's two of them. It's right, so it's not that. Right. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking three or more. If you're a fan and you know an answer to this, three or more brothers that have all shared the ice on the same game in the NHL, I would love to hear if anyone has feedback on that. And if you're a fan that's above the age of 60, yes, we know Gordy Howe played with his kids. <laughs> Nick, you had to steal their thunder like that. Exactly. Come on, man. But we're gonna uh, get roasted Canuck- if we don't mention that. So yeah, you know, got to cover that- our bases there, boys. Oh yeah. Um, speaking of the Canucks, a little bit of a trade alert over the past week. The Canucks acquired Nikita Zadorov from the Calgary Flames in exchange for a 2026 third and a 2024 fifth. The Canucks also traded Anthony Bavillier to the Blackhawks for a fifth earlier last week. I know there's a door of one got a lot of traction online. Canucks already loaded on D right now. What do you guys think? I mean, that's just not fair. Even that's just like, that's, that's huge for them. I think that's a huge pickup. I think he'll fit in great there. Mac. I think you chose the perfect word. Huge. Imagine six foot six, Nikita Zadorov and six foot eight, Tyler Myers on the same defense pairing. Yeah. That's yeah, terrifying. That's- it's not uh, not something you want to run into on the ice, for sure. No. Plus, you got Ian Cole back there. Obviously, the fuck you hockey. And then, you know, they obviously have Hughes and Roenick. I mean, they are – they're good. They're really good. They are. How did this team become good? How did we miss it in the yeah. preseason? How did – like, I don't, I don't really get it because now I look at the lineup and I'm like, yeah, they're sick. <laughs> so it's the same way that the Penguins used to be really good, and then they let this guy go and replaced him with Reardon, but I got to imagine Rick Tockett is number one in, in Jack Adams voting at this moment. Maybe towards his second, but... Man, I think Tock- the, the turnaround Tockett. for the Canucks is bigger because everyone was talking about them being like bottom five in the NHL prior yeah. to this season. Right. Yeah, Tockett's yeah, done a hell of a job. I, I I really, I think now that he has a full season as, as the coach, not a half season, love Bruce Boudreaux, but man, this yep. looks like a home run. Yep. Um... Anyways, we'll move on from that. Uh, the Jets signed forward Nino Niederreiter to a three-year extension at four mil AAV. The 
31 year old has six goals, 14 points through 23 games. Nice little signing for Winnipeg there. He is the epitome of a Winnipeg Jet. He big is guy. A, he, yeah. Like he just defines Winnipeg Jets hockey. <clears throat> big guy, but like when you need him to shoot or move the puck, he's very capable of doing so. Yeah, I feel like he's a prototypical Jet. Yeah. Another guy that I, for some reason in my head, I feel like he's been in the NHL for like forever, but he's like not that old either. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's kind of weird. feels like he, yeah, he's got, it's like Jeff Skinner. Yep. Jeff Skinner's like 32. I'm like, how, he's been in the league forever. How's that possible? Yeah, but he's a gamer too. Like loves scoring big clutch playoff goals. I think he's got a couple like game seven overtime winners or at least overtime winners in the postseason from Minnesota. So yeah. Um, total gamer, this guy. For sure. Uh, in case you haven't heard, next year's NHL draft will be in Vegas at the Sphere. You probably have heard about the Sphere through the news. There's a lot of events trying to be playing there. Some UFC fights, NHL draft, amongst other things. Uh, it will be the last draft before they decentralize it, which is sad. I know we talked to Mr. Eric Fair about that uh, a couple weeks back, and he wasn't a big fan of that. What are your guys' thoughts on this? It's a bummer, and, and I think the biggest reason why is about what Eric was saying on the show, which is just that it, you know it's such a special moment for so many guys, and they have such a good memory of you know their draft day or a cool, funny story from it or whatever. And it's like if you don't have that, it's just not as cool. I mean, I, I I immediately think of I know this wasn't the draft, but if anyone saw in baseball a month or so ago when they announced that. They were announcing the awards essentially at the end of the year. And um, I'm thinking of the video of Gunnar Henderson and his family in their living room. It's like the most staged thing ever. It's super uneventful. They're all sitting there and the TV says, and Gunnar Henderson is the AL rookie of the year. And they all like get up and hug and they're like, oh, cool. That's the most just like not fun, like boring thing ever. And I'm just worried that that's what we're going to start getting out of like these draft picks too. I feel like the coverage is just going to get hurt so much because we've seen it with the NFL draft where like sometimes the big guys, the big names aren't there in the first round. So then it just cuts to this crappy feed of them in their living room. Like you said, just kind of like going through the motions half the time the internet comes out half the time it's like 10 seconds behind so and it's also like gee i wonder how surprised you are even though there's very clearly a camera crew in your living room and like okay and we can see you texting the coach right now (laughs) yeah yeah. right and also one last thing on this and then we can move on but coming from a from a guy i actually had the i've mentioned this on the show before but i had the unreal pleasure being a part of the 2011 draft, I was the runner for the caps that year and got to like be on the draft floor. And like, uh, we didn't, we unfortunately traded our first, first round pick that year. So I didn't get to go up on the stage and stand with the pick and everything, but, um, still just, just a electric environment being down there with all the tables and all the, the most important dudes for every franchise at each table with a phone and computers and, it's just an unreal, unreal atmosphere. And um, it's one of the best uh, events that the NHL puts on from, from all the things that I've heard from people that go every year. Uh, so it, you know, all I can hope is that they try this out for a couple of years, decentralized. And like you said, the coverage is bad. Hopefully people make it known and, and you know, maybe they'll go back to it someday, but unfortunately I'm, I'm worried they never will. Cause it's the biggest thing for them is probably saving all the money on it. And right. It's like, yeah. Who are the Caps supposed to draft that year if if, uh, if you don't know? Do you I know who they rem- traded? I can't remember. Um, I know that I I want to say uh, I, I don't know that this would have been first round, but I, I know we had our eye on um this is funny. I'm pretty sure we had our eye on Rocco Grimaldi, if I'm not mistaken. I think he was that year. I'm this is so long ago now. I'm, I'm getting that sounds about wrong. right if I'm thinking but I, like again, World I don't think I don't think that was first round necessarily. I don't know. I I'll, I'll 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 do some research and get back to you. I, I was so starstruck and so I was pretty young too. I mean, I was uh, 13. Um but I was just psyched to be there. I still have a, I still have a, a jersey. It's a gigantic Capitals jersey with apostrophe eleven on the back that they had me wearing, running around the draft that that uh, those couple of days. 
Nice. Yeah, I think it's one of the coolest things to see the guys in the first round, especially, mm-hmm. you know, they they show the shots of them in the crowd waiting with their families. I think it's so cool that like the families get to come over, especially the families from overseas, you know, the people from Sweden, Czech Republic, Finland, Russia, wherever, you know, the families get to come to, you know, this big thing. And, you know, it, it really is like that rewarding moment for that family and that player who have put in so much time and effort to get them there and to see the reactions on stage is just, it's amazing. So yeah. uh, I totally agree with you. I hope they try this and it bombs. And because of that, we get it back soon. Hopefully makes for the best montages too. I mean, imagine, you know, you see Sid or Ovi when they do those old school videos of like them changing the franchise and they put Putting the, the jersey, jersey on. on. It's like, yeah. imagine that's in their living room and there's like yeah. spaghetti bowls. Like, like yeah, right. Come on. I don't know. It's the NHL. Let it be. But uh, yep, it's going to be decentralized after next year. Going to fly it through these injuries and updates here real quick. Uh, Tage Thompson expected back in the lineup tonight as we're recording this against Detroit for the Sabres. That's a huge addition for them. They've been struggling. Uh, Jacob Markstrom for the Flames week to week with a fractured finger. Calgary has called up Dustin Wolf as a result. I need him for fantasy so badly. Uh, Alex Newhook, he will miss the next 10 to 12 weeks due to a high ankle sprain. Uh, Dougie Hamilton is out indefinitely after suffering a torn left pec muscle and is having surgery. That sounds absolutely brutal. T's and P's to Mr. Dougie Hamilton. Uh, Jaden Schwartz will miss the next six weeks with an upper body injury. And then lastly, Mark Giordano is week to week after suffering a broken finger. All I have to say about injuries is Tage Thompson for goal game is now incoming within the next week. So just brace for impact. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Nick, I know that you uh, added this international news segment and I'm looking at some names on here and I probably feel like I shouldn't be reading these. So I'm gonna let you do it. Sure. So international news, a uh, bunch of IIHF stuff to touch on. So world juniors are a couple weeks away. I think first game is on December 26th. It's going to be over in Sweden this year, but they did adjust the times to help us here in the States, which is awesome. So the IIHF announced that net guards are going to be mandatory for all competitions going forward. So that's going to include men's and women's world championships as well. Glad to see that. I feel like we knew there was only a matter of time before that one got kicked in. Um, Some really sad news we have to get to, unfortunately. So Sani Hakala, uh, Finnish women's player, uh, played for the Finnish women's national team in, you know, for just for so long. She's only 26. And unfortunately, she's essentially going to have to stop playing hockey now after being paralyzed from the chest down after colliding with the net. So just something you never want to see. We want to wish her the best. And Uh, She participated in two Olympic Games and four IIHF World Championships, which is a huge deal across the pond. So just want to send her best wishes. And I I just couldn't imagine going through something like that. It's absolutely heartbreaking. We'll say the uh, the message she posted on her Instagram, pretty inspiring to have that kind of attitude immediately after um, that kind of thing. Not going to read the whole thing here, but you can go to her page if you want to check it out. But essentially... Uh, she just said it's not going to not going to define her, not going to let her stop, uh, you know, doing the things she likes to do. She'll obviously have to make a lot of adjustments. But, um, yeah, like Nick said, thoughts go out. I just hope yeah, hopefully there's a way for her, to, for her to stay involved in the game. I think that would be, you know, yeah, obviously it's totally up to her. But if there's some way she can get a front office role with that team, it would be incredible. Yep. Uh, And then some hilarious news from the KHL. After not playing organized professional hockey since 2020-2021, Ilya Kovalchuk has signed a one-year deal with Spartak Moscow of the KHL. (laughs) He's back, baby. Let's see what that does. He's back. (laughs) The new Yager. You can never count this guy out. He's just unreal. Comes back every time. It's crazy. But uh, that was a little bit of speed bag news here. Here for you. We're going to move on to the discussion portion of the episode, which is presented by Kane Footwear. Nick, I think you got a word from Kane. Absolutely. Let's take a minute to talk about Kane Footwear before the holidays here. They did just restock all of their colorways for their Kane Revive, which is made with bounce back foam using sugar cane technology. Good for the environment, good for your knees, good for your back, good for your body, and good for everyone by that logic. So head to the link in our bio today to get a pair of the most comfortable shoes (laughs) you will ever own. Guys, I've been wearing mine around the house a lot lately, and I have noticed such a huge difference. It makes a world of difference, especially if you're sitting all day. 
which is what I do at this desk, uh, hammering away with content here, whatever else I'm working on. Uh, it is a huge help on the back and the knees. I think the uh, the Washington Capitals could use some canes after their performance last night against the Arizona Coyotes, who is going to be the team of our discussion portion to start. Mac is looking at me with disgust. Yes, I see that. Uh, the Coyotes are 6-3-1 and one in their last 10. They've won five in a row. And not only have they won five in a row, they have beat the last five Stanley Cup champs in the process. So help me name that. That's Vegas, Colorado, uh, Tampa, 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 St. Louis, St. Louis, Washington caps. Yeah. Holy crap. That's a hell of a list. And I think that's like the first time that's ever happened is what the NHL said. It is. I mean, it's definitely a, a cool stat. I don't understand the, the, the people that are sharing the stat and harping on like, they're the first team in history to do this. And it's like, Dude, the, how many times do you think the schedule has worked out for this team? I was going to say, that's a first. It's definitely like just kind of weird luck. I mean, it's still a cool stat, but I don't get really why people are like, this is so impressive. It's just more random than anything else. But the the takeaway here is the Coyotes are winning hockey games. Like the, I mean, I don't really care who they beat. Um, it just matters that they've won five in a row, maybe more than that by now i don't know either way they look like the real deal right now i don't know how long it'll last but right now they look nasty clayton keller had his way with the washington yeah. capitals my goodness that was whew. i think he had four points before the game was like 10 minutes old or something yeah <laughs> i um i was texting with some caps friends in a group chat and some people were saying they're like i miss when this team was a freebie like when you go yeah. out west you beat them you maybe you play them twice in a row and then you come home uh yep they are absolutely not that now that building was rocking last night or whenever the hell you're listening to this but yeah uh keller was unreal just basically tore that caps defense apart mm-hmm. uh, i mean they're currently third in the central division they're only four points back of colorado for first place which is absolutely crazy to say out loud um Kind of looking at some of their big guns so far. Clayton Keller, I'm sure this is in a big part of last night. 24 points in 24 games. I mean, point per game guy right there. Um, Logan Cooley, we all know what he can do. Uh, he's coming on the scene here a little bit. Last night had a goal. Um, Bukestad. I have shredded Nick Bukestad several times on this podcast. I think this is his second stint in Arizona, if I'm not mistaken. Might Maybe not, but... He's got he might six, be right. Yeah. Six goals and 16 points in 24 games. I think that's more than he had in a season and a half with the Pittsburgh Penguins. That sounds about right. I mean, you know, he's finding time, he's finding space, he's getting top six minutes now. So good for him. It's uh one of the funniest parts of the Caps Coyotes game was um the their <clears> sixth <throat> goal. It was just like a, a shorthanded two on O from like center ice on yeah. and it's just like the classic pass back and i felt so bad for lindgren in the net he's just side to side to side to side until the puck's behind him but i couldn't help cracking up while it was happening because i'm picturing in my head already i was like i already know the second i open twitter it's gonna be the experience capitals hockey yep and just two guys standing right <laughs> in front of our net with no caps like anywhere even yeah, like remotely in the frame. And I was absolutely right. I went on there like 10 minutes later and Noah hockey stick emoji did not disappoint me verbatim. That tweet was the first thing that popped up. So it's uh, it's not been good for the boys not to get away from the coyotes. But after an amazing month of November in true capitals fashion, you know, buckle up for a rough December because it got off to a shitty start. Isn't this exactly what happened last year? Or yep, was it pretty much? We, yeah, we either had a sick November or sick December, but I think either it was one. It, whatever it doesn't yeah. matter um we should probably real quick talk about the kuznetsov thing yeah so 92 gets health bombed right before that game which sent capitals twitter into a complete frenzy you know everyone was wondering and sort of expecting is this a trade situation carberry calls it a mental reset uh mac you and i had some thoughts on this why don't you go ahead and take it from here so my pre-game thoughts are pretty different than my post game thoughts. So let me explain. When I first found this out, I was like, yep, makes sense. He's been real bad lately. Can't get through to him. Might as well try this. Not, not that I necessarily think it's the answer or is going to work, but 
Might as well try putting them up in the press box for a game, see what that does. So I understood the decision. That being said, as much as I am on, on the boat of like, would love to find a trade that would work or like, I agree that he just has looked very bad for us this year. And even before watching that game without him, I know we just played like shit. So it's like not the easiest example to use, but like, I could not help but feel that without him, we're just not, we're like even worse. Like I, I just, I yep. really don't think, cause here's the thing. The capital is the biggest issue right now is like identity. We've said it all season long and Boy, oh boy, are we just lost without this dude on the ice. Even though I know he makes a lot of bonehead plays, you see him out there and you're like, is he even fucking trying? But there's something about just like without seeing him out there with the the legs wide and the wide stance and he just kind of, the way he skates, it's like we kind of need him. Like I, we need him to figure it out or we need to trade for somebody that can that can be somewhat similar to to what he was when he was effective because just not having him in we're worse we're worse i couldn't agree more and my first thought when you and i were texting about this when the news broke was oh crap this is going to have the polar opposite of the intended like effect it's going to completely kill this guy's morale and drive to be a part of this team yeah but i i totally agree with you that after how that first period went being down five goose you you yeah. need that guy out there. And, and I swear I'm not just saying this because we got destroyed. Like even if we had like somehow like won that game or or if we had lost it in a more respectable fashion, like before we went down big, I was like, we look we look weird without him. Like yeah. we, just, we look like it's like a it's like a flat soda or something. Like yep. there's just there's just nothing to it. There's just it would no... be different if like there was a up and coming top tier rookie that was ready to take the reins from this guy and maybe Again. edging him out of a spot. But there's not basically Again, whoever like... you're putting in is not up to the caliber of the hockey player that Evgeny Kuznetsov yeah. is. It's like Strom is good. I love what I've seen from McMichael and obviously Dowd's a great fourth line center, but it, like it just they're they're even at his worst. We're a better hockey team when he's in the lineup. It's that simple. I'm going to switch it back to the Yotes real quick. <laughs> Sorry to digress. Uh, I, I hear you guys, and it definitely adds an entertainment part to it when Kuzi's in, for good or for worse. Two names that you need to know on the Yotes that I didn't know um, definitely last year. Now I know one of them going into this year, but one of them I've never heard of. So last year, Matias Maselli, Nick, I'm assuming that's like your countryman based on the name. I would assume so. Maselli, Michelli, however it's pronounced. Second he one. Kind of, he kind of came on the scene last year and he's picked up right where he left off 17 points in 24 games. He is an assist machine. So he's been really good for the Oats this year. And then this guy undrafted, he's not played more than 20 NHL games before this season. And he's now leading the team in goals. Michael Carcone. Remember I was going to say it's Carcone and, and you're right. Carcone. It, He's probably another fellow countryman of of Mr. Manella, but um, yeah, it, he he looked unreal last night, and I I was trying to figure that out too. I was like, who the hell is this guy? So I did a little research on him, but yeah, he he looks fucking good. Do you know why you guys haven't heard anything about these two players? Because they play in Arizona. Because no one's a fucking rat. Okay, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. There you go. Uh, something about the under five foot ten, under one hundred and eighty pound Italian guys is working for the for the Yotes. I I can't really reason that. Um, but yeah, undrafted, twelve goals in twenty three games. That's nuts. So uh, good for Carcone and the Yotes. Uh, we're gonna move on to the Ottawa Senators on a completely different note. They are currently last in the Atlantic Division, last in the Eastern Conference. They have only played 19 games this season, which is by far the least in the NHL. I think uh, Columbus has played like 26 or something like that. So definitely some games in hand, but they just haven't gotten off to a good start. They've played 14 home games and five away games to make up their 19 game schedule so far. Really weird split there. Um, what do you see your guys' thoughts on the Sens? Like what's going on? 
So it's I, for me, it's hard to tell if they're actually this bad or they just haven't played a lot of hockey games yet. It sort of reminds me of what happened to the Islanders when they had to do that first 13 games on the road. What was that last year or two years ago? Maybe I, I can't last do last year, but yeah, it's a good brain math good anymore. Uh, yeah. So like you couldn't tell like because they had played so much fewer games than everyone else. You're like, are these guys bad? Are they going to be in the playoff hunt out of the playoff hunt? And especially because it's the East, you just have no idea now. So I think the fact that they're like 500 at home is pretty telling, you know, they're exactly seven and seven at home. They obviously have some problems. I think they've got a really hard time stopping the puck right now. So I don't really know what else to expect from this team when we, you know, get maybe into January, we'll have a better picture of them, but you would think they've got a lot of games coming up here that maybe other teams don't have as many. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, the Senators, I don't know, like I'm looking at their team stats right now. It's a couple depth guys. I know Shabbat's been in and out of the lineup. That kind of hurts. Norris, we know what happened to him. That one also kind of hurts him. Um, uh, Tarasenko hasn't looked good at all. Only three goals this season so far. That I was, was the just going to say that. Big he's, one. Been, he's been nothing for them so far. Yeah. So um, is that something where you guys just think he's having an off year or maybe starting to like decline or is this a bad fit for him right now? It's hard to say. I mean, I I kind of want to say bad fit just because it's the senators and it's pretty easy to not like it there. <laughs> I feel like with New York, he could play like pretty much anywhere on the first three lines and be a very effective player. Whereas here you're probably looking at him on, at the first line as a 85% sure option. And if not, he's going to the second line. Yeah. Yep. No, I think you nailed it. It's weird how it's working. Daily faceoff has him slotted on the second line with Batherson and Stutzla. Stutzla's look great. I mean, he's been lights out for them. Um, Batherson's I'm, been okay, kind of streaky. Yeah, a little streaky. I don't know. It's weird. I mean, I'm looking at the goaltending. Neither of the goal – well, maybe this is the problem. Corpusalo not looking great. Anton Forsberg also not looking great. Also, neither of them are good goaltenders like it's not it's not that it's not that they like haven't found their game they just like aren't good <laughs> I, if you're if you're watching this on youtube nick almost spit out his drink when oh, that was almost coffee out of nose boys <laughs> that, but mac you're totally right like i feel so bad saying that but like they're both very bad at playing goaltender right now <laughs> Both of them have over a three GAA and under a 900 save percentage. The Sens are definitely going to need something better out of them if they're going to do anything. But yeah, kind of a weird up and down year, weird split for the Sens. I don't have their upcoming schedule in front of me, but I would imagine it's kind of weird. Pharrell Vamelka, you are an Ottawa Senator. Because speaking of which, we can get into uh, some underrated goalies here, huh, Harry? Yeah, last discussion point before we move on to gambling, and then we'll get you out of here with trivia. Um, the story of this season about goaltenders has been so strange. I mean, you know, you think of the regular names. You think Allmark, he won the Vesna last year. Vasilevsky, I know he's been hurt, so that was kind of a weird wrench in the start. Uh, Igor, right? And then we just talked to Mark about Jonathan Quick instead of Igor, which is weird to say out loud. So it's kind of like the season of unsung hero goalies, for lack of a better term. It was a fantasy you know, nightmare, are... which oh you know, if you, if, you, yeah. if you tried to draft a goalie high in fantasy, you probably have the worst ROI of all time. But Or are in a 14-plus team fantasy hockey league. There's basically no goalies left at all, so good luck. Yeah, I mean, you'd expect us to be talking about like Ottinger or I don't know who's another Hella guy. Buck. Hella book, right? Broken, yeah, you name it. Which some yeah. of these guys have been fine. It's not like they've been like atrocious, but like the superstars so far, stats wise, have been weirdos. Yeah, we got Joel Hofer on the St. Louis Blues. He's been really good for them so far this year, kind of out of nowhere. Everyone talks about Allmark, rightfully so. He just won the Vesna. Swayman's been lights out for the Bees. He's second in the NHL in save percentage, third in the NHL in GAA. Chucky Lindgren, I ask this question every time I talk about the Washington Capitals. How are they in the playoff picture right now? Because they don't score goals. And I tweeted something that the other day was like, what the fuck is Charlie Lindgren doing? Like, And I posted the screenshot of his stats. And I can't remember who it was. It was Mac. I think it was one of your friends. He responded, he's like, he's like a cheat code. Like, I don't understand what's going on right now. Um, he's looked great for the Caps. 
interesting things going on in the Washington Capitals goalie system right now. There's a lot of rumblings in the Twitter sphere from Caps fans about maybe one of those goalies not being needed anymore. We'll get to that in a second. I know if you're a Yotes fan, you were just listening to us talk about them, and you're like, how do you not mention our best player arguably this season, Connor Ingram? Well, now I'm going to. He's third in the NHL in save percentage. The only two goalies ahead of him are both Boston goalies, Olmark and Swayman. You take those out, he's leading the NHL in save percentage, which is nuts. I happened to pick this fit, this guy up in fantasy, I don't know, like a month and a half ago <laughs> for a random game that I was like, eh, we'll take a chance. I'm pretty sure he got me either a shutout or like a 35 save one goal against performance. And I, he's been on my team since. Cause every time he plays, it's like 10 fantasy points. I can't drop the guy. Yeah, we know. Okay. We get it. It, yeah. You have a good goal. So that's how you shot up. That's how you shot up the standings. Cause I looked today. I was like, Mac is like six and two or something. I've like, won what? six weeks. and I lost the first two weeks and I've won six in a row. God so. damn it. You guys like your division is absolutely absurd compared to mine. Have you looked at the difference between the two in that league? Yeah, it's ours is top heavy a little bit. Yours is like everybody's kind of even. Everyone's right? like four and three or five and five. Yeah. And then uh, two other goalies, Talbot for LA. Also on uh, my team. Fuck you. Um, I know this was like a shaky one in the start of the year. We're like, can he do it? Can he not? He's had a couple weird stints with some weird teams. He's top four in every goalie category right now. He looks great. And then the last one, I know this might not sound like a goalie who's under the radar, but. I know we had our doubts going into the year. Aiden Hill, he's first in the NHL in save percentage and goals against average. So that's working out real well for Vegas. That team looks very, very good. And I was kind of hoping they were not going to be as good, but they might have gotten a little bit better, to be honest. So after reading this list, who would you say is like unsung goalie of the year, for lack of a better term? I mean, so far it's got to be Ingram because yeah. I think every other guy on there, you could make an argument for like, well, but it's like the Swayman thing. It's like, yeah, but when you play for a team that hasn't lost many games or let in many goals, same with Aiden Hill, Talbot again, it's like, yeah, maybe people didn't necessarily believe in him, but his team is really good. So, but it's kind of like Ingram is like, like the reason the Coyotes are like any good right now. I mean, I know we just, talked about a lot of their forwards being really really hot as well but like this guy is and the other thing is this is this is what i started to talk about when i said karel vamelka you are an ottawa senator vamelka is a a really good goalie too like i mean both of those guys are capable of being number one starters in the nhl and i think if we see the coyotes fall back down to earth and we get closer to the trade deadline that could be a very real scenario for them to kind of continue their rebuild, move one of those guys. Probably Vimelka, I would think, would be the one they move just because Ingram, I I don't know, I think is younger. I only say that because I was watching him play for the Milwaukee Admirals just two years ago, and then the Preds do Preds things and fumble the bag and trade him for a bag of pucks, same as they did for Eli uh, Tolvanen, but that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, it's interesting. We'll monitor that situation because right now I think uh it's I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think the coyotes have one of the best tandems in the league. They absolutely do. I think Mac, you make a great point. I'm in total agreement with you that it's Connor Ingram. If it's not him, I'm gonna go with Hofer. I did exactly what you did with Ingram with Hofer in our fantasy league. Picked him up when I like needed a goaltender to get me a win <clears throat> a couple weeks ago, got it done. He's great, not only, and if you're a fantasy hockey player looking for a goalie, not only is he great when he starts, but he tends to come on in relief a lot because Bennington is doing Bennington things from time to time. So when he comes on in relief, he tends to pitch like half game shutouts or, you know, one and a half period shutouts. So, uh, yeah, I got to go with Hofer, if not uh, Ingram. I'm going to go Cam Talbot. I know this one might be like, oh, Harry, he's got a really good team. Well, my argument to that would be the Kings have been a pretty good team the last like two seasons, and they've kind of had a little bit of a shuffleboard or a rotating door there, for lack of a better term, with the goaltender position. Yeah, Copley, Cal Peterson, a lot of question marks for sure. Yeah, like, you know, they had Quick there for for there too. Um, You know, he's played for four different teams in the last four seasons. Calgary, Minnesota, Ottawa. Now he found his way in Los Angeles. They're probably, I would say, if you if you told me that you think they're the best team in the West, I wouldn't hate that. I, I do think that they're right there with Colorado, Vegas, Dallas, right there, right in that breath. 
But Talbot's looked great. I think he's shut up a lot of critics. I know a friend of the program who definitely critiqued him, won't name names, but that, that did not age well. Morgan texted me after uh, after the Kings-Caps game and said, Talb- Cam Talbot is not that dude. Oh, no, man. Oh, I wasn't talking about him. I was talking about someone oh. else, but oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Morgan Miller doesn't like Cam Talbot. Well, I think he was just pissed that the Caps had like 15 shots and won. Yeah. Everybody, everybody has a bad night. It but, was like the you know. one bright spot from that road trip they're just now coming home from. So, yep, you know, exactly. glad they were able to beat something of a good hockey team in the LA Kings. I think, you know, before we wrap up on the attendees here, I, you know, I didn't want to say Charlie Lindgren and be a total homer, but that dude has played out of his mind the last two seasons with the Washington Capitals. And I think he's had an awesome start to this year. And I think he's making a case at this point for who should be starting a net. I mean, I was going to ask the question. I don't want to start like a 20 minute rant, but like, when are we getting there? (laughs) Don't disagree with that. However, I love to talk about how there's a ton of delusional caps fans. And I think there's a a bunch of them that, that have the dumbest and worst opinion about Darcy Kepper possible. There's guys being like, just, just wave him or just cut him and right. just t- cut your losses. And I'm no. like, you have never watched a game of hockey in your life and you don't understand how it works. So those are people that didn't know who Darcy Kemper was until he came to the Washington. Capitals. Some guy on Twitter was like, this is the worst free agency signing we've ever had. And I was like that. No, I could, it I could is write not. You, I could write you a <laughs> dissertation <laughs> about, <laughs> about a hundred players that were worse. Right. Free agency signings. For the Kevin Cowboys. Shattenkirk. Oh, Eric Belanger. Oh, that was brutal. <laughs> Actually, that was a trade. That was Dustin trade. Penner. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, <laughs> all right. We got to stop. We yeah. got to stop. Yeah, the dissertation's been started. Lindgren, um... <laughs> two things can be true at once. Lindgren should maybe be the starter right now. Kemper is fine. Well, He's I think fine. like the best way to put it is a little bit of healthy competition in yeah. any sport with goalies is a good thing because you're sure. motivating your teammate to be a better version of themselves. You know, yeah. there's only one guy that can play goal on totally. an NHL team. There's 32 guys that right. get to start in goal. So yeah, that's math. It is um, math. All right. We are going to wrap up here with gambling and trivia. Then we'll get you all out of here. Uh, just a reminder, this gambling segment is brought to you by prop tracker. Prop tracker is your home for player prop research and finding outlier bets for NHL, NBA, NFL, and more. Once you find a bet you like, start tracking it to get notified on its progress, like shots on goal, rebounds, or receptions. Go to proptrackerapp.com slash empty betters to try a free month of the Android or iOS app. A reminder that the word tracker does not have the letter E in it. It is just T-R-A-C-K-R, proptrackerapp.com dot com slash empty betters do you, either of you guys ever have problems like spelling out words with letters like sometimes i look i'm like that doesn't sound right every now and then um especially like if i'm like deathly hungover and i've got like one of those like strokey hangovers i can't read or write for shit <laughs> like i'll go to text someone something and i'm like what why did you think that word was spelled that way you moron like it's hilarious <laughs> I'm an editor for a living, so that right. I do not have this problem. <laughs> That's fair. I, sometimes when I'm like spelling like P R O P, I'm like, am I saying this right? I hope I spelled it right. I don't want to. I know what you're anyone. talking about. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. It's just a weird sound to me sometimes. But um, just gonna fly through this a little quickly, like we usually do. I've got Prop Tracker pulled up right now on my iPhone. Uh, some goal scorer props that you might want to keep an eye on that probably have some good value. So this isn't going to be your Matthews or Ovechkin's a little bit of some diamond in the rough action here. Uh, Valeri Nichushkin of the Colorado Avalanche goals in six of his last 10 games. Always could find some good value on him. Uh, who else we got? Kale McCarr. I know he's a defenseman, but that's good for you because he's a stud. You can usually find him around that like plus 250 range goals in four of his last 10. That's always nice. Robbie Fabry, he's been red hot for the wings lately, scored a beauty the other night, uh, goals in five of his last 10. And then this one will probably get you some really good value. Mike Hoffman on the San Jose Sharks. People never think the Sharks will score, but he's got goals in He's been nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Goals in five of his last 10. So don't sleep on Hoffman. 
Uh, and then I'm just going to read you guys the best teams for over six and a half right now. If you're listening to this on Wednesday, that's last night, the Canucks and Devils would have played. I know the over-under is at seven, and Gambling Twitter is having a field day with this one. The two best teams to bet the over on right now, the Devils and the Canucks are both one and two. Naturally, you're going to get that at seven tonight. That's just what it is. Lay the juice if you must. I know our buddy b is on that. Um, third place, Tampa Bay Lightning. Fourth place, this one is surprising, the Calgary Flames. Never would have guessed they'd be an over team. Team I can't figure out. Haven't paid a lot of attention to them this year. They give up a lot. Yeah, and I just picked up their goalie to replace Markstrom, so that's nice. Uh, Actually, and then the, that's a good move, but yeah. And then the Oilers at number five after that, Columbus, Seattle, Detroit, Colorado, Arizona, just some teams that maybe you want to keep an eye on here. But um, yeah, go download Prop Tracker. Uh, it really answers any questions you have about who's hitting at what rate, what prop you want, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, go check them out. All right, Mac Trivia. Let's get out of here with some trivia. Word. All right, so I'm going to start with, I have kind of two, if the first one ends up, Going along, we'll just keep that as it, but I, I think it might be kind of a slam dunk. So uh we'll we'll roll with it here. But both of these are, are pretty interesting. So we'll see if we can get to both of them. All right. The first one, let's see. How do I want to phrase this to you? All right. So um what uh okay. 40-year-old blue liner became the oldest player to score for Montreal in their long and storied history. On December 5th, 2014. Who is Hal Gill? No. Was he still playing in 2014? I don't know. I just thought old people and who don't score a lot. A 40-year-old defenseman for the Montreal Canadiens in 2014 scored a goal. Yes, and and when he did that, he became the oldest, not just defenseman, he became the oldest player to score a goal for the Habs in their long and storied history. I kind of find this a little shocking, knowing that they've been around since, like, the dinosaurs were walking the earth. All right, I'll throw a, I'll throw a name out here. I know he played for Montreal. I can't remember at what point in his career. I'm going to go Sheldon Surrey. No, but I like that. I like that. Um... I know he played for the Habs like a little bit earlier than 2014 because there was a very, very flashy goal, arguably someone's best goal ever scored against this player. So I'm going to say Roman Hammerlick. No, but I love that answer too. Okay. That's a good one. 2014, they played the Rangers in the Eastern Conference Finals because the Rangers lost to the Kings. So I'm trying to think of that playoff series. The fuck did they have well this was oh. uh oh i see what you're saying though yeah i don't know if he ever played for the habs but I, no i don't think he did never mind i, I was gonna say oh, gonchar but yeah that's gonchar. it that's it wow yeah. nice it was Let's gonchar go. yeah i was I gonna say markov for, i thought so the, he only played for the senators all right we'll do the second one too because i really like the second one but just to read this full thing veteran defenseman sergey gonchar scored a goal on december 5th 2014 during the canadians nice. four to three loss at Chicago Blackhawks, the 40 year old blue liner became the oldest player to score for Montreal in their long and storied history. Nice so he area. played for the Caps, Penguins, Senators, and Canadians. And I, I think Apex? Dallas might have been in there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Dallas was in there. You're right. Yeah. What a legend. Right. Dude's a fucking legend. And no coincidence, he's the defensive coach for the Vancouver Canucks, and they yep. have a great defense, so there you go. All right, this last one's really good, too. We'll see if we can fly through it. All right, this player logged his 1,000th game in the NHL on December 5th, 2021, um, as his team prevailed over the Maple Leafs 6-3. to three. When he did this, he became the third player from the 2004 draft to log his 1,000th game, joining which other two players? So if you can give me three players that as of December 5th, 2021, were drafted in 04 and had played 1,000 games. I'll give Ovi's, you some hints if you want. Ovi's one of them, right? Ovi's one of them, yep. I'm going to guess Gino's one of them. No. Oh, wow. And and again, this is 2021, so it might. I'm not saying they're the only ones now, but... No, I hear you. Little injured bitch. Um... 
<laughs> Ovi, Gino, who else was that draft? Oh, God, that's going to kill me. That's when I don't know that well. Sam. So, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the – so let me read this again. This player – and I'll give you another detail when I read it. This player logged his 1,000th game in the NHL on December 5th, 2021, as his Winnipeg Jets prevailed over the Maple Leafs 6-3. to He became the third player from the 4 draft to do so, joining Alex Ovechkin and blank. Is it Brian Little? Play. No. Okay. This guy played for the Jets through two or three years ago. Still in the uh, NHL, not on the Jets. Yeah. Can you tell me who he plays for now? Um, or will that give it away? Um, I, I, can, I could. Get, can you give me yeah. one more guess? Oh, four. Mm. What the fuck was oh, four? I always think OV Gino and everything after that's kind of a blur to me. Uh, um, I'm really trying to think. He put a, a nickname for this guy potentially be a song by liquor store. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I got it. <laughs> Blake it. Wheeler. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ah, yes, sir. there. Okay. The third one is a a little. I'll give you the team that he's uh. I was gonna say most associated with, but now that I'm thinking about it, hold on. This might he might have only played. Uh Either way, he's definitely most associated with the New Jersey Devils. Let's see if that was his only team. Um, I've got one. I think I might know it now that you said that. Who is Bryce Salvador? No. It looks like this guy played literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 seasons with the Devils before playing his final season. He played 13 games with the Islanders and then he retired. Oh. Wait. Oh, he's retired, so it's not it's not not Paul Mary. But like Nick, that you... era of Devil. Like like Nick, you look like you know it. I know this. I just can't think of the name. Parise wasn't that draft. And he still mm-hmm. plays. And he and, still plays. And he bounced around a little more than that, too. This dude's got 1,037 NHL games. He's got are 203 yeah. goals, 349 assists. He's a good player. That was uh, all that time. Who the first round play for the drafted Devils drafted and the Islanders? Oh 20th overall in the 04 draft by the Devils. I wouldn't even think about the Islanders because it was only 13 games. You probably right. wouldn't be able to guess it. It's got to be Canadian born player. Oh, people are losing it right now. How am I not getting this? New Jersey Devils whole life from 04 to like Nick, now, I'll give basically. you a college hockey stack. I know you're a college guy. He helped the University of North Dakota. Travis the Ajax. Four. Bang. There it is. Ah, uh, there it is. Right. Okay. I only gave wow. you so many hands because we got to get yeah. out of here, but. That was a good one, Mac. I should have yeah, gotten two that. for one, two for one today on trivia. Nice. Those were good ones. Yeah, I had I liked them both. I wanted to do them both. So shocked I got the gun charts. It's a good thing you told me to good. say it. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Any final notes before we get out of here, fellas? No. Nope. Okay. All right. We appreciate everybody for listening. As always, once again, a big thank you to Mark for joining us. Always a pleasure. Oh, check out and- the new merch on the store. Yes, we have new merchandise on the empty better store. Uh the the link to that store is in all of our social bios. There's a link tree in there, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, you name it. It's there. Go check it out. Some good uh, good themes there. Got some old vintage all-star game themes, oh, yeah. LA Kings theme. Uh, it's actually looking pretty sweet. So definitely if you want to get that for Christmas, order it sooner than later. Without further ado. Class dismissed. Class dismissed.